Hey everybody, I'm Alan Noon, DevRel tech artist with Epic Games, and today I'm going to teach you about the game framework, a little bit of UMG, some blueprint, so on and so forth. So the idea here is that, to set the scene, we are game jamming away, clickety-clack, we've come up with our little game, our prototype is working well, and now we actually want to wrap what I'll call the game shell around the proto. So we'll put together a, a menu system, and then we'll get into some of the game framework stuff where we're pushing and pulling values from things like uh, game instance and game mode. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. So we'll see where this takes us. All right, so I guess to begin, game framework is a collection of objects that are spawned every time uh, the Unreal project is launched. And several different components make up the game framework. So we're talking about here, if we take a look at world settings, we've got our actual game mode itself, the pawns, HUD, player controller, game state, player state. These are things you've probably seen before if you've worked in Unreal. But um, also we've got things like save game and particularly game instance that I'm going to get into. I'm going to show you how you can store variables in your game instance and then retrieve them and keep them persistently across a, a number of different levels. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got the third person template here, standard template. And let's go ahead and start creating some actors. So I'm going to make a new folder here. I'm going to call this Blueprints. And we're just going to pick up some coins, how about? So we're going to make a new Blueprint class of actor variety. And we'll just call this our VP pickup. And let's start putting that together. All right, so we'll want a static mesh in here so we have something to look at. And let's go get some static meshes. So I'm going to make another new folder. Static meshes. And um, instead of going ahead and importing them, I'm going to grab some. Ooh, that's not pleasant. All right, what I'm clicking there is show engine content. Now over here on the side, I've exposed this here. So uh, basic shapes, we've got some basic shapes here, basic material, let's go ahead and grab those. And I'm going to drag those in to static meshes and I'm going to copy them. So you don't want to move them because those are actually the static meshes that the editor is going to refer to when you're doing various operations. So I like to make a copy of those. And let's go ahead and hide this again. All right. Back to our blueprint. Okay, so now we can pick static mesh. Uh, let's step back though. Let's go to our static mesh. Let's go ahead and make a new material. Yeah, try to keep things organized here. Let's do a new folder. Very good. And we'll drag him into there. All right, let's go ahead and make a new material. This will be our coin material. And we'll take a color somewhere-ish in there. And we'll hold down one and plug that into metallic. And I'll do it again for roughness. And let's change that to a value of uh, one. And roughness, is, let's take a guess at 0.75. Not too much. Other way. Or two five. Okay. Suitably coiny looking. Yeah, we'll save that. Go back to our static meshes here, and um, let's go ahead and we'll apply that to our cylinder. Sorry about the jitter on the UI there. All right. Excellent. Okay, so now we're going to pick that cylinder. I think that's my, uh, could that be the UI scaling I've got going on there? Yeah, sorry about that, folks. All right, so let's spin this up a little bit here. Okay, that'll be our coin. And... We need to be able to interact with this thing, so let's go with a sphere collision. 
scale that up like so. That might be a little bit too big, but let's drop that into the world, see what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, that'll work, I guess. It's a little large, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and move this. Like so, and I'm going to throw a rotator component on here. Rotating movement. All right, awesome. So we have our coin. I'm going to line this up with our character here so that we don't have to run around the world too much to try to find it when we start playing. And let's jump back in there real quick. I'm going to go ahead and turn off collision. No collision. Okay, great. Perfect. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to pick this up, and we are going to keep track of how many coins we're actually picking up. And um, we could store that information in a number of different places, but I'm just going to go ahead and stick it on the pawn. So let's find our pawn. And I'm going to make a new variable, and I'll just call it coins. And we'll turn that into an integer. All right. Then back on our pickup, I'm going to add another variable. And I'm going to say this is the coin value. That will also be an integer. And we'll compile and set that to 1. All right. So now, let's go ahead and select our sphere. And we will say, let's expand this. On component, begin overlap. Let's go ahead and add some interaction here. And um, we'll make sure that the only thing that we're interacting with is the character. So we'll find the third person character there, cast to him. And basically, this is going to act like a true false node. Like once we found him, we'll say that's true. Um, let's go ahead and find his total coins. We're going to set his coins. All right. We'll want to get the number of coins that he already has and add that. Like so. And we'll add that coin value. So that way, if we wanted gold coins, silver coins, copper coins, they could each have a different monetary value associated with them. Okay, and just to make sure that this is all working properly. I'll just print this to the screen real quick. Okay. And there we go. Okay. One, two, touch it three times, four times. Great. All right. So once we've touched it, we don't actually want it to hang around. So we will go ahead and destroy this actor. go. Okay, that's better. Okay, so we have our basic pickup. Let's go ahead and throw down a few of these. So I'm going to select our guy, and I'm holding Alt and just dragging out. We'll do like five. Yeah, you'll have to forgive me here. We're doing some scaling with the UI, so... Um, Things are a little bit easier to see, but it means that some of the gizmos are a little bit off. All right, cool. So by the time we pick all these up, we should have five total coins. OK, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to get into a little bit of the, the uh, game framework stuff. And we'll use the game mode to monitor how many coins we have and then use that to be able to transition to a new level. And I'm going to create. Let's go ahead and create another blueprint here. I'm just going to duplicate this real quick. And I'm going to call this BP Portal. All right. So what will happen is we'll pick up our coins. If we've picked up enough, then we'll be able to hit the portal and then transition to a new level. 
So let's go ahead and pick a different static mesh so we have something different to look at. How about the cone? And we don't need to scale him. And we don't need to rotate him either. All right, that should work just fine. All right, he won't have a coin value. Yes. But we'll need to know which level we're going to transition to. So let's go ahead and say uh, this is going to be the next level. And we're going to make that of name type, like so. All right. Save everything. And let's drop him down over here. Scooch him over a little bit. All right. So, yeah, we'll work on him first. Let's go to his event graph. Let's look at his uh, sphere collision here. He should still have the on overlap. OK, so if it's a third person character, we're not dealing with any of this coin stuff. We don't need to destroy him. We're going to go ahead and open a level. And we're going to get the next level name. And that'll be the level that we open up. We'll want to make this public so that when we have it selected in the viewport, if we look at the details over here, there's our next level. We're going to go to level one. Actually, this would be a great time to save our level. Let's go ahead and make a new folder here called Maps. Very good. And in our Maps folder, we will save this as Level zero. Great. OK, real quick, do we need anything else in this level? I don't think so. We have our coins, our character, and our portal. So at this point, we could go ahead and duplicate this and make our next level. So let's just right click, say duplicate. It's going to be level one. And we'll do that again to make level two. Quick save. And um, let's go in and make sure that we differentiate these so that we can tell them all apart. Yes, yes, yes. OK, so that is level two or level one, I'm sorry. Let's find our post process volume. And in the details panel, we'll look at our settings, uh, scene color. And I'm just going to tint this one sort of greenish. OK, that'll work. And we'll do the same here for level two. Got our post-process volume, and I'm going to tint this one blue. OK. And since we're here, we might as well tint this one red. OK, now it should be perfectly clear which level we are in at any particular time. OK, so we need to determine whether or not we have enough coins to be able to transition to the next level once we've hit the portal. So this is a good time where we can use um, the actual game mode. So let's go over to our world settings here. I'm going to open up the Blueprint folder. So game mode override. Let's go ahead and create a new game mode. And I'll just leave default names so that anytime we're looking for the new game framework classes, they'll be prefaced with uh, new. All right, so this allows us to change which pawn we're using. And we'll go ahead and use third person character. And the player controller, we're going to make a custom player controller. Again, new player controller. That should show up. Let's close some of this stuff down. All right, and uh, a new game state. OK, so game state is a part of the framework that we can use to set rules and conditions for whatever it is we're trying to do, right? So like I said, we want to collect five coins and then transition to the next level. So we're going to make a custom event within game state. We don't need these guys right now. So let's do a custom event. And this will be coin test, we'll call it. 
and it's going to take in an integer. And we'll say that is the total coins. All right, let's keep it the same. We'll say coin total. All right, and um, let's go ahead and uh, we will use begin play. Let's go ahead and get the controlled pawn, get the player pawn. And we're going to figure out that that is the third person character. We're going to cast to him so that we can get at the variables that we set up. And we're going to look for coins. We're going to get coins. OK, actually, hold on, let's do this. We'll just set this promote to a variable. This will be our, our, we'll just call this a pawn. Now, we could hang these wires right off of here and wire them right into our coin test thing, but I like to try to keep things as organized as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I just did, promote that to a variable. So now we will get the pawn. We'll get his coins. And we'll do a test on that. We'll say if it's uh, greater or equal to, let's promote this. We'll say, we'll, we'll say five. There's five. And I'm going to promote that. That's the coin goal. OK. If that is true, Now we could either we could do this a couple different ways. Doesn't really matter, I don't believe. But we could either call open level from here, or I think we had already originally set it up from the um, from the portal. So we'll go ahead and do that. It's going to be a little bit of jumping back and forth, talking about a couple different things. But um, we'll say uh, this is level clear, and we want that to default to false, and we'll set that to true. Okay, so every time we call coin test, we're going to get the pawn, find out how many coins he has. If it's greater or equal to five, if that's true, then we're going to set level clear. And we'll jump back over to our portal. And we'll want to get the game mode, or game state. Game state. And um, that's going to be our new game state. And from there, we will get our, um, what do we call it, level clear. Get level clear. And again, we'll branch. Wire that back in. And I usually like a little bit of a delay here, so I'm going to say uh, delay just so it's not jarring as we jump into the new level. I'll put in uh, one second. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so quick review. Picked up all the coins, cast it to the character. And to make sure that uh, we're actually, the character is what is um, overlapping the portal object. We don't want him overlapping with other, other pickups or pieces of geometry. We're basically using this as a, a test there. We're getting the game state that we created. Let's go ahead and wire this good stuff up here. Reaching down in and grabbing the flag for level clear. If it's true, we're going to pause for a second, and then we're going to open up the new level that is uh, set back over... Here. And of course, if uh, none of that is true, then we're just going to fail out and do nothing. All right, so let's see if that all works. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now, what have I missed? Oh, we haven't called coin test anywhere. So let's go to our coin. We'll do this from the coin. So on overlap, third person character, before we destroy the actor, let's go ahead and from up here, I'll 
probably going to end up setting up a bunch of this stuff uh, as we build onto the project. So I'm going to use a sequence node to try to keep things a little more organized. And uh, we'll get that uh, state. We'll get game state once again. And um, we'll cast to the new game state. And from there, we will just promote to variable, and we'll call that our game state. All right. Now back down here, we can just drag that in. And we should be able to call coin test. OK, great. Let's take a look at our coin test once again. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. OK, let's give that a shot. One, two, three, four. Now if I go and try to connect with the portal, nothing happens. If I hit number five, there we go. Now we've loaded up the, the next level. And again, so now this is um, another instance we're going to get into another part of the game framework. So I collected five coins, but I loaded a new level. And so when I go to hit the portal, nothing's going to happen because the total number of, of coins that are set on the third person character on our pawn is getting reset. If I collect five again, I should be able to go to the blue level. Oh, we did not set up where we're going next. Let's go ahead and go back and do that. All right, so he's going to go to level two. Save. He'll go to level three. Uh, well, you don't have a level three. Let's go back to level zero. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Why are you not going back? Should be there. He's got his thing set. Uh, let's take a look at our, here we go. We didn't set up our game mode. There we go. So now, okay, so what was happening there is when we initially created this level, the game mode wasn't set. So you saw all of this other game framework stuff was also set to none. By switching to our new game mode, it's going to fill in all of these slots. So as we were connecting with the uh, portal object, it wasn't checking the new game state. It wasn't calling coin test because it, uh, it didn't know to actually use that as the game state. So we'll need to set that on this level as well. New game mode. OK, let's try it again. There we go. That's better. OK, perfect. OK, you know, let's add a little bit of polish to this. Let's go back to our, um, let's go back to our portal here. Even though we have a little bit of a delay, it's kind of difficult to tell that we've actually hit the portal. So I'm going to um, do a little time dilation. And I'm going to set this to uh, pretty slow. And we'll want to take this down too. So now when we hit this bad boy, there we go. Slow motion. We know we're transitioning. All right, cool. All right, so um, let's jump into some UMG. Before we hit the next piece of game framework, let's, uh, let's keep track of how many coins we actually had. Now, previously, we were just pointing to the screen, but let's, um, let's close down some of this stuff here. And I'm going to make a new folder. And we'll call this UI. And from within UI, we'll make a new widget. And um, let's call this coin widget. Actually, I'm getting backwards. I like to say widget first. 
a good coin. Okay. This is going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to take some text, drop that in, and we'll make it a little bit larger. Maybe a bigger font, like so. And this will just say coins. Okay. And I'll copy and paste that. And this one will just be zero. All right, now I'm going to select the both of them. And I'm going to say, I'm going to right click and I'm going to wrap with a horizontal box, which is right here. And let's go ahead and move that around. I'm also going to throw in a spacer. I believe that's in the primitives. Go ahead and drop that in like so. There we go. And we'll just kind of put that in the corner right about there. Okay, so another part of game framework, player controller. So we'd already created one previously when we set up our game mode. So the question came up on the forums, where's the best place to start creating and housing your widgets? And it really depends on the type of game that you're making and a bit of personal preference. So in this particular case, it's a single player game at this point. Uh, you know, we could house it just about anywhere, but I typically go with the player controller because that way, if you do have multiple players, you want their UIs attached to the controllers that are actually um, of the player. So let's go into player controller. And on begin play, let's go ahead and create a widget. We'll get our new coin widget. And I'm going to promote that to a variable, and we'll call that the uh, coin widget. And then we'll add that to the viewport. OK. So now if we play, there we go, we've got our coins. And let's go back to our widget, and we'll hook it up. So a couple of different ways that we could go ahead and increment the value here. Um, the more performant way would to have it all event-based, right? Like as soon as you pick up the coin, it's going to go ahead and you know send a message up to the, the widget and increment this thing. But the quick and dirty way is to go ahead and just do a binding. So let's select this. And where's our text? Right up here. So we'll say bind, create a binding. All right, so we need to get at the third person character and get the total number of coins that he has. So I'm going to jump back to the event graph here. And uh, first, let's, again, we'll get the pawn. And we'll cast that. And that's going to be the third person character. And we'll just promote that to a variable, and we'll say that's our pawn. OK, so now when we go back to our binding, let's give ourselves some real estate here. Where are my variables? There they are, pawn. We can drag our pawn in, get. We'll get the number of coins he has, and we'll just attach that there. All right, so now when we play, with each coin that we pick up, it's going to add to the value. Sweet. OK, so what do we want to do next? Now, as you saw, the total number of coins is getting reset every time we load a new level. Perhaps we want to keep track of how many coins we've collected through the entirety of the game. That's where we're going to get into game instance, which is another piece of the framework. So whereas we saw initially, when I screwed up, and didn't set the game mode properly, that none of these fields were filled out, right? So these are all fields, all pieces of the framework that are specific to the world that we have loaded at this time. So world, level, map, same, same rough idea. OK, so game instance is a piece of the framework that lives up above everything else. It's always present. We can push and pull values to it. So this is a good place to store, I'll call our coin bank. So we're, we need to go out to the project settings. And let's drag us into view. 
and uh, I never remember where it is offhand, so I'm going to look for the um, instance. Is it in maps and modes? Yes, it is. So we can create, this is the default game instance. We're going to go ahead and create a new one, and it's going to drop it right into the Blueprints folder. I'm just going to leave the name New Game Instance. And now, jump back to our Blueprints folder. Here's our New Game Instance. So let's double click and open that up. And we need to store the total number of coins for the game. And I think I said we'll call that the coin bank. And that's going to be an integer. And let's, uh, we can do this from the coin over, oh, that's the widget. We don't want that. Let's go back to our coin blueprint. And we'll need a reference to our game instance. So let's go ahead and get the instance. And we'll cast to the new game instance that we created. So we'll say cast. And we'll promote that to a variable. And that'll be our game instance. OK, so now we can refer to that from the coin whenever we need it. And we'll do it, let's do it right around here. This looks good. So basically, the same thing that we're doing here with the actual character, we're going to do a similar thing with the game instance, but um, it'll actually persist level to level. So let's get that. And let me zoom in there for you. And we'll get the coin bank. And we'll set the coin bank. And we're going to add, where are you, integer and integer right here. Like so. Let's kind of shuffle these around a little. And uh, we'll, again, plug in the coin value. I guess we could just wire off of here, too. Whatever. Gives me an excuse to... Uh, uh, difficult to do reroute nodes with the uh, scaling. So let's go ahead and plug that in. All right, and then we'll want to hook the rest of this back up. Okay, so currently we don't have a way to display the coin bank, so let's go ahead and add that to our widget. Go back to our coin widget here. And I'm going to take this horizontal box, and I think if I just go ahead and copy and paste it down, everything should come along for the ride. Yes. Very good. We'll say this is our bank. All righty. Oops, we don't want to shuffle that. We want to move this around. So now I'm going to select both of these horizontal boxes, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap those with a vertical box. So now they're sitting nice and pretty together. Go ahead and resize that a little bit. And we can adjust our spacer so that these guys are a little bit better in terms of being lined up. Otherwise, that's going to drive me insane. Mm, all right, fine, close enough. So real quick, there we are, Coins Bank. Let's hook that back up. So again, we'll just do the easy binding. And we'll need a reference to our uh, game instance. So let's go ahead and... Again, I like to try to keep these things somewhat organized, so I use a lot of sequence nodes. So hook that one up there, this one back here. Kind of spread these out a little bit. Okay, so uh, let's get our game instance. We need to cast to it so we can talk to our particular flavor of game instance. And we'll promote that to a variable, game instance, so that in our new binding, we can just drag that in and get our bank, get the coin bank, and wire that right up. 
All right, so initially this should look, it should read one to one, right? But now when we go to our next level, we see that coins is reset, but the bank is actually holding at five. Because again, the game instance is part of the framework that exists throughout the running of the executable, right? So it doesn't matter which levels I load, the game instance is always there. We can push and pull values to it, do what we like. Okay, um, before we get into the next part, let's see, I was gonna talk a little bit about saving games. We could set up a simple save game, but maybe let's jump over to the questions and uh, see if there's anything we can answer there. Okay, can you briefly describe the use of game instance, game mode, game state, and player state as they relate to multiplayer games in terms of which should be used for replication and types of data. So um, again, it really depends on your project and in many cases, personal preference. So much like, just for example, I'm housing the, uh, the UMG widgets in player controller, depending on what type, your game, what type of game you're making, you may want to uh, store those in different places. Now, um, I believe all of the different pieces of the framework are replicated, so they should be valid, but I'll have to go double check to see, make sure that that is the case in, in all circumstances. Uh, any significant difference on putting the coin count on the pawn versus game state, or perhaps something else entirely? No, again, personal preference. In this single player game, it really wouldn't matter, but if we did want to make this a multiplayer game, whether it's couch co-op or online, uh, we could store the coin count on the player so they could have individual counts, for example. I mean, you could put it on the player controller if you wanted. All right. Uh, let's see. How well would UE4 batch coins if you wanted 200 of them Pac-Man style? A lot of different factors there. Uh, so certainly people have done Pac-Man style games with lots of little pickups. Uh, so many different factors go into that. How complex the thing is you're picking up, what kind of materials you're using, so on and so forth. There's a lot of optimizations that you can make in order to make that run, but uh, 200, I wouldn't expect that that would be a big deal at all. How can we build Blueprint or C++ the loading sublevels process into a large level? Um, so I kind of think I understand what you're getting at there. Uh, so, okay, so this is kind of outside of what we're doing so far, but we can take a look at this. If, uh, perhaps this will answer it. If you're unaware, if we go to, um, where are our levels? Here we go. So we can open up this levels browser, and if we wanted to, um, let's say we wanted to separate out our background from our pickups and maybe we have enemies. May maybe each one of those lives in a separate level. We can go ahead and load in, see we can go ahead and add existing. We can pick from the selection of maps that are actually in our project. So the persistent level is sort of the master level for this particular world and it can be built up of multiple sublevels. Now those sublevels can then be set to being loaded all of the time or being triggered by Blueprint, or C++, I assume. Um, so uh, that's how you would set up like streaming, uh, so on and so forth. So hopefully that gives you some insight into what you're asking there. Uh, is casting messy for migrating? Migrating, maybe some more information. Migrating where? Migrating to what? What are we looking to migrate? And is the game instance intended to replicate in multiplayer scenarios? So I haven't done a tremendous amount of multiplayer stuff, but I believe so, yes. I believe the game instance um, replicates across the whole, uh, I'll say, project. Okay, that's all we have right there. So, yeah, let's move on. Okay, so a couple things we could do next. Um, we wanna, I wanna get into the save game thing, because that's pretty cool. But maybe first what we'll do is we'll build a new level to house our main menu so that we can either just play and go directly into the game that we've got set up now, or we can set up another button to go ahead and load, save and load our progress. Oh, hold on, let's see. Is casting messy for migrating? And migrating blueprints to other projects. Uh, well, so in the case, I mean, you're always gonna have a game mode, game state, player state, game instance, but the depending on your subclasses of those that could potentially get messy right so like i've just created 
new game instance. In another project, I might call it something else, like um, endless runner instance or something. And uh, it may not have the same variables. And so, yeah, that could break. All right. So let's go ahead and actually we can do some level streaming stuff. Not level streaming, but loading up multiple levels. So let's go to maps, and I'm going to make a new level here. And we'll call this uh, our level main menu. Let's go ahead and open that up. Save all this goodness. All right, so totally black. And um, let's jump back to our blueprints folder. Let's go ahead and I'm going to create a new game mode just for the menu. Now, there may be a different way of doing this, but this is just a habit that I got into. I'm not recommending one way or another. But uh, so let's call this our menu game mode. I'm just going to copy that little strip of text there. Okay. And we don't actually need a pawn because we're just going to be looking at a menu. And player controller, uh, I guess. Well, I guess if we need that later, we'll go ahead and, and mess with that. So let's make a new widget. User interface. And this will be our uh, widget main menu. All right, let's get this out of the way. Make some real estate. All right, there's our screen, and let's go ahead and take a button, drop that down, make that a little bit larger, throw a piece of text on it, and we'll just say that's new game. And let's copy and paste. And we'll say that's load. And I'm going to bundle those together with a vertical box by wrapping. And let's go ahead and, uh, you know what? I'm going to make some ginormous buttons. Okay, and let's go ahead and anchor that in the middle of the screen. And we'll just use some nice, easy round numbers here. Should be roughly center ish. And just for kicks, let's throw this down. We'll say this is our coin game. OK. All right, that should work. And let's go ahead and, once again, just because it's how I typically do it, I'm going to stick this on the player controller. So we'll go ahead and make a new menu player controller. Much like we did before, we'll go ahead to begin play. We'll create a widget. It's going to be our main menu widget. We'll call it that. And we're going to go ahead and add that to the viewport. So add view. And now if we play, there we go. And I typically, let's, uh, we'll do this as well. we'll. Go in our player controller. And once again, with the sequence nodes. Shuffle this around a little bit. Let's go ahead and uh, show mouse cursor. We'll say that's true. 
just so that when we play, we can actually see what we're doing. All right. OK, so back to our widget. Let's go ahead and start our new game. So I'm going to select that button. And we'll say on clicked. Again, with the delay, just because I don't want it to be so dar jarring. Pardon me. We'll go ahead and open up a level. And we'll always start at level 0. All right, so we hit play. Nothing happens when we hit load. When we hit new game, half a second, and we're in. OK, so we've got a simple game shell there. Again, using parts of the framework. We're using the player controller, the game mode. Um, next, so saving and loading. So let's go back. And um, what we want to be able to do is initially, we'll just go ahead and we'll, we will save the number of coins in our bank and reload that. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and create a new Blueprint class. If we go to the class browser down here and type save, we have a new object. Here we go. All right, come on. All right, I'm not sure why he's not allowing me to select him. Let's try again. Select. Okay, there we go. And we're going to call that, let's go ahead and rename him. New save game. All right, so we go ahead and open him up. And we want to save the total number of coins in the bank. We know that's an integer, so we'll just say, um, we'll call that coin bank. change that to an integer. All right, then from our player controller, I'm just going to quickly hook up. Uh, this is our menu player controller. We want to actually do it on our game player controller. So that is new player controller here. I'm going to go ahead and we'll just hit the Q key. And we'll use that to save our game. But uh, first thing we need to do is create a save game. So let's see. Create a save game object. And yeah, let's go ahead and organize this now. Oops, let's go ahead and organize this now. Again with the sequence, my favorite. And we'll pick our new save game. Let's go ahead and cast to new save game. And we'll promote that to our variable. That'll be our save game. All right, so we've got that created. So as soon as we create the player controller, we're going to go ahead and create a save game object. And then from down here, We can save game to slot. Now, we could potentially create a fancy UI for entering a custom name for all this stuff. But uh, we're just going to have, for the sake of this purpose, we're just going to have one slot. I'm just going to call it slot name A. All right. So now, every time we hit Q, first thing it's going to do is go ahead and write out the data that is in Coin Bank. And let's see. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we'll just go ahead and, again, just a tiny little bit of delay. We'll say half a second. And I'm just going to, let's do this. Print. We'll say game saved. Then we'll quit. All 
OK, but we're not actually storing anything in our value here. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll jump back to our coin where we're doing all the rest of this good stuff. And maybe, maybe we could do this here. Let's think about this for a second. So we want to write to the save game. Uh, let's, let's, wait, let's take a look at our game instance. Maybe it makes more sense to put it there. New game instance. We've got our coin bank here. So we want to get it from the game instance because we want to save it throughout all the different levels that we have spoken to. So let's go back to our player controller. And what do we have here? We have our coin widget. Let's go ahead and get our game instance again. And let's see. Get game instance. We'll cast to the new game instance. Provides a variable game instance. Okay. So now let's get that. All right, let's scooch. Let's scooch this down. So from game instance, we should be able to get our bank. And from our save game, we should be able to set our bank. And then save our game. All right, so let's see if that works. First things first. Uh, you know what? I'm not sure where this install is. I'm not going to go track it down. We'll be able to figure out if it works in a second here. Let's go back to our main menu widget. OK, from our load button. On clicked. So we want to actually load a game. Load game from slot. And since we're just hard coding this, that should do it. And then we want to go ahead and um, we'll just open up this level for now. All right, I don't think I've missed anything. Let's see what happens. So we're going to play a new game. Here we are. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We'll go to the next level. One, two, three coins. All right, now I'm going to hit Q. Tells me the game is saved. The game is quit. Now if I load it back up. OK, so we're not setting our coin bank. All right, so from within our widget, let's take a look. And so we can get our game instance. And again, cast. A lot of casting going on. Or should we get our save? Yeah, let's. Um, so if we've loaded this. Let's see. Let, let me see something here. That's our actual save game. So we should be able to get our bank. Let's hook this back up. And let's go up here, cast to our game instance, and yeah, we'll just promote this. Uh, game instance. OK, let's get that. And we want to set our bank in the instance. All right, let's see if that works. 
Yeah, there we go. So our game was actually saved. It saved the number of coins that we had. So again, let's walk back through that real quick. So when we hit Q, we save out the game. This is on our player controller. We're getting the coin bank, and we're saving that same name, or similarly named variable into the save game, and then we write it out to the slot that we've just called slot A. Now, if you dig down into your, um, your project save game area, Actually, I do know where this is. Let's go find it. Let's pull this off of here in case there's any top secret stuff. You never know what's on these things. All right. Uh, game framework. OK. I think I'm safe to pull this back. OK, so within my project folder, I'm going to go to Saved, Save Games. There you see it. There's A.Save. That's where we're storing our uh, coin bank. And then when we go back to load, when we click the load button, we're going to load that save game. We're going to cast to that save game instance, grab the coin bank, and then we're going to set the, uh, the coin bank in the instance, which will automatically update the widget due to the binding that we set up earlier. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that again. So everything's reset. OK, so one thing that you'll notice, let's go to the third level here. All right, 13 coins, I hit Q. Let's go back and play again. Now, we're, we're saving our coins, but we're not actually saving the level that we were in. So I think, um, I think we have time for that, and then we can do a little more QA. So how about on our portal? Let's open this up. So we're already storing which level we're going to. Why don't we go ahead and store which level we're already on? So we'll say current level. And we'll say that's public, and that's going to be of name type. Very good. And we'll need to go into, let's see, did I actually save and come? Let's save everything just to be safe. OK, yeah. So let's go to our maps. Let's open these back up here. And now we should see in the details panel current level, so we just need to fill these in. Okay. Save. This is level one. Save and level two. Level two. All right, so that should all be good. And uh, let's open up our save game. New save game, where are you? There you are. No, this is the game instance. New game state. Why can I not read it? New save game at the end. My apologies. OK, so this is going to be uh, current level. Again, of name type. Save that, and within the game instance, we'll, we'll pull it from there as well. Current level. All righty. And from our portal, we'll say, again, with the sequence node, Let's go ahead and uh, we'll get the game instance. Cast. Front variable, game instance. Oops, ah, I clicked off of it. Try that again. Why are you up? And uh, we'll get this. You know, I'm, tell you what, let's, we don't really need this. Let's do it right from here, ugly style. And um, level. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so what are we doing? Where are we? Here we are in the portal. We're going to push up the name of the current level to the game instance as soon as the portal is created. All right. And then back on our player controller, as part of this, let's go ahead and push this back a little bit. Again, from our game instance, let's go ahead and get the current level. And we should have current level in here. Set current level. Hook that bad boy up. Okay, so it should be saved out. And then when we go to load our game, let's disconnect that. But I do want to open a level. And from the game instance, let's get, uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and get the current level. And that's the one we're going to load up. All right. Hopefully we didn't mess anything up. Let's see what happens. So we started in the blue level. Let's go to the red one. All right, so seven, eight coins in the bank, and we'll hit Q to save and quit. Play again. Oh, you know what? I'm not on main menu. Let's go to main menu. Need to go to our main menu map so we can launch from there. Save everything. All right, try again. So that should have saved. So we should be able to jump right in and, uh-oh, what have we done wrong? What has happened? Let's see. Let's retrace our steps. So let's take a look. Let's start fresh. Let's go to our UI, main menu widget, load. Let's take a look at the binding here. So on clicked, we're going to load the game from the slot, cast to the save game. We're going to get the coin bank. Ah, that's where I went wrong. Can I just do this? No, it's typed wrong. So we'll say, um, well, we don't want it from there, do we? That's dumb. We want it from the save game. Get current level. All right, let's see if that'll work. There we go. I actually don't remember which level we were on. Let's go to the green one. All right, now let's hit Q. And if we hit play and load, are we going to go to... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we left off on the green level. Okay, so I think that was largely what I wanted to show. So we're picking up coins, we're storing the value on the pawn for the actual level we're in. Uh, we're also adding that total to a... Uh, the bank, which gets pushed up to the game instance, so it, it's persistent level to level. And uh, we're using save and load to write those out, load them back in. So yeah, let's take a look and see what kind of questions we have. Uh, let's see, the question is, why I have to cast to new save game if I'm creating it with new save game class? Excellent question. That seemed odd to me as well when I first started messing with save games, and I wasn't quite sure why that was. I am definitely going to ask somebody because it definitely seems like, let's see, that was on our player controller, wasn't it? Uh, new player controller. Yeah, so it seems like here we should be able to just promote this to a variable, and that'll be our new save game. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm sure there's a great reason that I'm just not aware of at the moment. But yes, you ha actually have to cast to it first. All right. Those are actually all of the questions that I have uh, written for me right now. So um, yeah, I guess uh, that'll be it for today. If you do want to ask more questions, jump into the thread on the forums. I'll be happy to uh, get in there and try to answer some of those for you. Uh, also, I would like to promote that this Thursday, I believe it is, we are doing the Match 3 uh, live stream. So I'll be on here with Lauren. We'll talk about that project a little bit. 
some of the optimizations we made on the art side, and she'll talk about programmery type stuff I have no idea of, uh, no understanding of. So, um, yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you very much.